So what do you say about MS Dhoni? Let's say you have two minutes to talk about MS Dhoni. We want to hear from you. All right, I like this jamming. So Mahendra Singh Dhoni, MSD <laughs> as he's popularly known. I would call this man a phenomenon. I don't think he's just a cricketer. I think he's a natural sentiment. That is mm. what this man is. Uh, so how is it going there in Bombay? It's going fine. Bombay is, uh, you know, as usual, still running. Mm -hmm. So, that's a saying that nothing stops Bombay and it is so true. Yeah. So, yeah, Bombay is fine. We're all uh, trying to be as safe as possible, trying yeah. to do our best. But uh, to earn a living, you got to go out. So, yeah, yeah. So how but how did you keep your, how did you keep yourself busy in the lockdown? I think now you have started the shows, NBA shows, uh, and all. But how what, what was your lockdown story? What were you doing during the lockdown? I was doing a lot of Instagram lives, uh, connecting okay. with uh, people that I worked with. Uh, yeah. Did a lot of uh, family bonding. Connected with you know my cousins that I had not kept in touch with. Spend yeah. time with. Uh, friends catching up on phone and you know zoom calls and all of that and yeah. i also host a lot of events online uh yeah. did that for sports i hosted a couple of shows where we were interviewing david warner it was called sony tempest stop so did yeah. that so yeah lockdown I really really worked hard to keep myself busy <laughs> so how are you keeping busy now what's your routine now i think it's been a little bit easy now in india i guess the lockdown and everybody is getting back to normal to their works and all so how is how is it going now with you it's going fine it's it's still not there but it's heating yeah. up nba shows have started so you know going uh, to host that so that's that but other than that uh, it's still you're at home and you know trying to be as safe as possible <laughs> it's just and i think this yeah. entire year is going to be that yeah, I think mostly it's going to be the same, same the entire year. So, are you excited for the IPL, start of IPL? Yeah, I am. I am like every Indian. I am just disappointed that it's not happening in India because yeah. it would be so much easy to catch a match. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, you want me to give you time to set up your thing because I think you're holding the phone in your hand. You want to keep yourself. Uh, yeah, no, I have actually moved into a new house, so I have no setup here. So, it is going to be like this. <laughs> Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry for that. <clears throat> so, how did you get into this uh, uh, presentation, sports journalism? Uh, could you please uh, explain about that? Because uh, it's always a different. For every person has a different story who comes into this field. So, what's your story coming into this field? Um. Well, you know, in college days, I participated in a lot of debates in extempore, so I was always like sort of cut out for, uh, you know, hosting stage shows and always wanting to be in you know in front of the mic so i think that is where it all started from and yeah. uh, i did my engineering and you know worked for an american firm for one and a half year and yeah. uh, i quit that job and it so happened that uh, i wanted to apply for my mba uh, abroad and yeah. uh, in the interim i started looking for another job so i went to this friend of mine and uh, he said uh, I, you know he was he owned this real estate firm so i said like, like you know do, can you give me a job and he was like listen i have heard your voice before and uh, it's um, it's something that resonates with this event that i'm doing where i'm yeah. hosting this cricket match uh, which is being played at the puna club yeah so would you like to do commentary on that and uh, i was like okay cricket commentary so i went to my mother <laughs> learned a little bit of cricket because she's a cricket fanatic and uh, I did a big bit of piece of commentary on that. It was the 26th yeah. of Jan, 20. I remember the date, and yeah. uh, they liked it and they gave me a league in the month of Feb. And uh, there was someone out there who said that why don't you go audition? Um, yeah. So I went for auditions and I sort of got selected, and that's how it started. So you started first uh, with cricket or uh, NBA because I know you are a big fan and you're a big uh, lover of NBA. Yeah, no, I actually started with hockey. Oh, nice. So, yeah, from hockey, I hosted Kabaddi. From Kabaddi, I hosted the UBA, which is the Indian mm -hmm. Basketball. Um, yeah. And uh, then I did the NBA, and then cricket happened. Yeah, yeah. So how was it? Uh, how was that journey? How did you come? Uh, I mean, how 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 did you come up with the ICC event? Uh, because that was a big event, and uh, I think you that was your big event, I guess, right? Uh, in the cricket field in the cricket fraternity as a presenter 
yeah absolutely it was um, mm-hmm. it was my claim to fame moment but uh, yeah it just came to me i don't know how did it come to me i must have done something right somewhere <laughs> um, yeah. so it was came through me uh, through an email the oh. icc sent me an email saying that there's an opportunity to work with the icc and would you be interested but before that for sonia had show, hosted the india tour of australia and india tour of um, uh, india tour of england and india tour of australia yeah. so that's how somewhere someone saw me and recommended me to them and that's yeah. how it happened so it's just the fortune fortune and i had done cricket before No, no, yeah, you have done, but uh, you didn't really apply for it. Uh, it just came through them uh, uh, recognizing your talent and recognizing your uh, uh, things. Yeah, right? I think at that level, it's it usually works through reference, you know, like with yeah, somebody yeah, has. That's what, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, when like if say, they have usually like if they've seen you work, will they be? You can't be. It's not like you know a nine to five job where you can sort of apply for it. There is no position yeah. that is out there. So you have to keep working. I think you have to pick up every small yeah. or big thing that you do. Do your best at that, and the next door opens up. Yeah, yeah. So how long have you been in this uh, presentation field? You've been with hockey, kabaddi, NBA, cricket, and uh, I've saw your videos also. You were doing uh, filmy star interviews too. So how long have you been in this field? I started on the twenty sixth of Jan, twenty fourteen. <laughs> you remember the day too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, so it it had has been now what six years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how is the journey? How do you feel now, looking back, uh, all these six years? How do you feel the journey? I feel that it was uh, it was meant to be. Actually, I just feel like it was meant to be, yeah. and uh, I was sort of denying my own destiny for a very long time. But <laughs> I think it was just meant to be. Yeah. So uh, you worked uh, uh, with an IT firm in US based, right? How long did you work with that field? Uh, what was that? No, I did not work for an IT firm. I was uh, working for a power management company called oh, okay. Eaton. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's so I'm an instrumentation control engineer. I got hired wow. in a core engineering company. So, uh, yeah, I was working in R and D uh, software where I was coding transmissions wow. to automate trucks. So I was working in the vehicle segment, and then yeah. I later on do business development. So yeah. that was that was. I think I was not really cut out for that. <laughs> so I would I don't think I was the best of employees there. Yeah. For sure not. <laughs> you know like so because you know you your when you don't really enjoy what you do yeah. Yeah. it sort of affects your to your entire performance. Yeah. I'm a much much better employee and a professional now. Yeah. <laughs> because it feels so much of satisfaction when you are in the field which you love and which you do it passionately, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what do you say about uh, women in sports journalism? You being a presenter, a journalist, and all, and you have an experience of six years. Nowadays, I mean, like from last two, three years, four, five years, there have been a lot of women coming into the sports. What do you say about that? Ah, uh, I say that first of all, the women who are already in sports journalism, they yeah. are some really dynamic, smart, intelligent, spontaneous, yeah. hardworking. professional women and yeah. uh, there's thing to learn from each one of them and trust mm-hmm. me these are all attributes that most women in sports have yeah. um other than that for a place for women in journalism in sports journalism i think it's a it's the right time the right opportunity to grab um a lot of people are encouraging broadcasters encouraging women to step into sports so there mm-hmm. is a huge platform for women to explore Yeah. So if you're a bit of a nerd if you like studying then you must be here. <laughs> so how do you prepare yourself because you do all NBA cricket hockey kabaddi and how do you manage all those things because it's not something you can just go and randomly do it right you have to be aware of the rules you have to be aware of the players records and all those how do you keep up yourself with multiple sports? You just study you study the game you read articles <laughs> uh you follow the handles you know social media is the best place to follow like what is people's opinion about it you know um you follow the players of various particular various sports and you see what they have to because as a ranker you're supposed to know the player much better than i believe the rules of the game you yeah. know so um, that you you do all of that and you just do your research that's how you can learn a sport yeah. if you've not played 
<laughs> so are you a sports person in your childhood were you uh, playing any sport back back in childhood or in college days i played a lot of badminton my mother was a state level badminton player wow. but i played uh, a little bit of badminton i was not very good at it but i uh, did a lot of running so i ran for cross country yeah marathons so that i did but yeah. i have not really been a sports person but i have been more of an orator all my life so wow. i have been a very good debater i have been a very good elocution yeah so i think that is where anchoring sort of steps in for me yeah uh, sports happened because it was it came to me through my mother i think how did this love on uh, basketball had happened because basketball is not really that much uh, famous or not it more into the public but maybe it is uh, nowadays it's becoming more uh, i guess but how did that happen to you well, how did you get the interest on the nba and all basketball and all so um you know uh, when uba came to india uh, i got the opportunity of working with some people some really really good producers and directors one of my uh, directors was a five time emmy award winner wow so we really knew basketball in the back of the hand and i got that opportunity and uh, my my producer paul del piso he sort of trained me into getting to know the game better and no. uh, i think americans were the best people to learn basketball from because they knew yeah. and how it's like it's like indians are the best people to learn cricket from you know yes, yes. So, um yeah i think that's how i picked it up and that's how my interest grew i think uv is where my interest grew from sport yeah. and uh, just passed it on to the nba <laughs> so what which, <clears throat> which sport do you like more you like nba cricket which one do you choose yeah i think a lot of people ask me that there is there is no comparison you see i saw a few of your shows and uh, you were hosting it so good the same way you're hosting both the shows nba or cricket whatever it is you're hosting it with the same intent and with the same energy so i was little uh, I, i just wanted to ask you like how are you able to do both these things in the same way because for anybody there will be a love on one thing more than the other thing right <laughs> no actually if you were a sports buff yourself you would yeah. know that watch sports to appreciate athleticism to appreciate mm-hmm. the sports spirit to appreciate you know the adrenaline that you get in close matches and yeah. i think that you can get in any sport and is it until uh, there is a sport that you find like totally boring you know yeah. and i'm not sure what kind of a sport would that be because sport is really entertaining <laughs> yeah. especially between cricket and basketball both of them if there yeah. if there is one one sport which is all about strategy and yeah. uh, there is the other one which is all about speed godly athleticism and um, you know dynamic performances so um you choose what yeah. would you choose what would you choose over strategy over athleticism i think i choose both <laughs> you choose both yeah but what's your love okay let's say you got a chance to host nba and you got a chance to host uh, cricket show so which one do you yeah. prefer on a day both the things are happening at the same time which one do you prefer i know it's a little bit tricky uh, i'll make a make it a point i do both how can you <laughs> let's say both are happening at the same time <laughs> yes yeah, so i'll find a way to host both of them <laughs> you're so diplomatic <laughs> yeah so how was it uh, how was the whole experience uh, you working with the legends of the game in the 2019 world cup uh, many legends were there you were co-hosting with them you were interviewing them former cricketers present cricketers how was that uh, your experience how was that journey learned a lot um mm-hmm. found uh, even more respect for the game actually uh because you know you were interacting with the players first hand and yep. you listen to their stories and their struggles and and how um they sort of won for the country in situations where it was difficult and uh, you started appreciating you start appreciating people that you already had know of but now you kind of know them even better you appreciate them much more so um i think it was it was new found respect for the sport for the players um and of course it was um, a world cup to remember so it was a dream come true yeah yeah so i'd like to ask more about that uh, uh, world cup and the cricket because it's been a cricket show uh, so 
how how is that working with uh, the other presenters from uh, different countries which you have not known i guess that was the first time you might have known all the presenters from different countries like pakistan and there might be somebody from afghanistan i guess if not the lady so how is it working with uh, multiple uh, people from different countries different diversities fantastic um i've always as a person growing up wanted to work uh with people from different nationalities yeah i think yep. that is truly uh, i think you truly develop as a professional when you you know you get that opportunity mm -hmm. um and having said that like you mentioned diva patang from afghanistan and zainab abbas from pakistan both of them are beautiful women in and out yeah. um zainab knows the sport like at the back of her hand so there was so much to learn from her and yeah. uh, i think you just you just uh, take the professional side and not only was it professional but it was also it also ended up in some great friendship um wow. you know the field so i i really had a very good time and i really miss it yeah i really no, miss I, if the, i mean for i unfortunately i couldn't bring uh, zaina mabaz on this because i was trying to bring both of you on the same show but the timing and uh, she was a little busy with some other works that's the reason i couldn't bring her on the same i thought of bringing both of you on the same uh, show so you also work with the women's t20 world cup in australia uh, so how was that how did you feel uh, seeing all those stars and uh, i mean cricket is getting better and better uh, in terms of women cricket too so what's your experience with that women cricket and what's your take on women cricket uh, when compared to men's cricket because you've done uh, icc world cup first and then you've done the women's cricket what what difference do you see and how how did you uh, how would you briefly describe uh, when you compare both of those i think uh, women's cricket was uh, i think i it boosted a sense of you know um being around women and being more comfortable i think i think at at some level it boosted that sense uh um, mm -hmm. for me professionally but other than that i must tell you that icc does not treat it any differently yeah um, now it's not like that both of them are saying that um professional and it was I mean everything that I saw in the 2019 cricket world cup was the same in the 2020 women's t20 and also because um I've never hosted a women's world cup before this so it was the first time and it also happened to be uh the very first women's world cup in which you saw such a massive audience at the mcg for the finals so yeah. um for me it was um I think uh, for me it was equivalent um yeah. And India was performing so beautifully to the finals. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, so it was a great journey. It was yeah. really, really nice knowing all the women cricketers a little more personally. And uh, Australia is a beautiful country to even host it. So it was lovely, really yeah. good. So how 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 is the Indian men's team? Because you might have uh, closely uh, watched them during the practices and all those in the. Uh, Uh, 2019 World Cup. So, how was that experience? And uh, do you see any uh, different sort of things from the players? Uh, because generally, uh, general audience think that they are uh, big stars and they behave in a di different way and all. So, what did you really experience uh, with the team and the team players? I just experienced that they are very, very focused <laughs> and yeah. extremely uh, dedicated. so uh i don't think you know um their stardom has got to do anything with what they are there to deliver for the country yeah so yeah extreme amount of focus is what i saw yeah yeah so and generally you might have heard from your friends or fans or uh, any close people saying that okay these guys uh, these guys are so arrogant they behave very badly and all those things so you might have worked very closely right so do you did you really none of them right yeah, it says like the yeah everybody was very everybody was very professional i mean yeah. uh, if they have to go to practice and they don't have time so it is what it is i mean yeah yeah there is no arrogance in that. so yeah, yeah I, none of them none yeah. of them uh, not only indian cricketers everybody else yeah yeah so who who is your favorite cricketer who you have posted the show who is your favorite cricketer I mean, among the shows you you have hosted, among the shows that I have hosted, yeah, I don't. I 
think I have actually hosted a show as such. Um, I have like interview, maybe type of interview. I think the very first interview that I took for the ICC Cricket World Cup, which was with the uh, Indian skipper Virat Kohli, would always be my favorite one because, um, I mean, my very first interview, and it is with the Indian skipper, so it will be very special for me forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how was it uh, when you first met uh, Sachin Tendulkar, uh, Saurav Ganguly, and all these legends of the game? Because is it the uh, is it in the 2019 World Cup you met them the first time, or have you met them before? Uh, I've I've met Mr. Saurav Ganguly before in the India Tour of England and then with the India Tour of Australia as well, I believe. Yeah. Um, Sachin Tendulkar, of course, I met for the very first time at uh, the 2019 Cricket World Cup in the One Day for Children. Um, yeah. uh, he was doing commentary that day. It was India versus England, and yeah. uh, it's the aura is amazing. <laughs> and uh, Sar Sar Gangli is for sure the most. Uh, I think he's a true gentleman. That's what yeah. he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, among the Indian captains, uh, if I give you two choices, uh, choose one captain who is the best captain. What who would you choose, Virat Kohli or uh, Saurav Ganguly? Because both of them have uh, diff- uh, they have contributed a lot uh, to the Indian cricket. Right now, uh, Virat Kohli or uh, Saurav Ganguly. And then there's this another question in the same way. I don't think I am, uh, you know, um, qualified enough in uh, uh, you know in cricket to make a choice like that. Yeah. Uh, the that I'm qualified in is. Uh, Getting to know them better, getting to know the sport better. Okay. Um, I am not a critique. I am a, I am an anchor. Yeah. And yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, I can make that choice. Yeah. So, what was your best moment uh, in 2019 World Cup working with uh, ICC? Um, you know, uh, of course, like I said, the very first interview that I took with Mr. Virat Kohli. Uh, yeah. Then I. Always remember the India versus the Pakistan. Yeah, it was a that, that hat trick by Mohammad Shami. I was standing right at the boundary when that happened. Yeah. Um, at the boundary when the Super Over was being played in the finals of uh, England versus New Zealand. I don't think I can ever ever forget that day in my life. Um, I think a break from cricket was one day for children when. Um, I got a chance to interact with uh, three UNICEF ambassadors, um, yeah. the playground pundits. I think that was very special. There were many, many, many moments, which was very special. I think, I think the entire 2019 Cricket World Cup will be my, will something. Yeah. So how was it? Uh, I mean, what's a memorable moment uh, in 2020 uh, T20 Women's World Cup? What's a memorable moment there? Oh, plenty. Actually, I got. To uh, spend one day uh, with the Indian uh, um, I got a chance to spend a day with uh, Jenna Rodericks. Yeah. Uh, with uh, Kriti. So um, I think that that day I will remember because uh, they were doing all these lovely dances and there were a lot of children out there who were sort of sort of, uh, uh, trying to teach a certain step that had gotten viral on that time. Uh, at that time on social media that she had done with one of the security media officers in Australia. So I think I'll remember that day. It was it was a fun day. And yeah. other than that, I remember each and every single match of uh, uh, the Indian cricket team because I hosted all of them. So yeah. uh, it's going to be very special. With the ICC T20 Women's World Cup, I was not only being a digital insider with ICC, but I was also hosting the in-stadium yeah. uh, yeah, so I was also the in-stadium MC for yeah. Kojo, and uh, that was a lot of fun interacting with the audience and you know listening to your voice in the entire stadium. I think, I think that was special. So, who is your favorite cricketer uh, uh, in women's cricket right now? Any favorite cricketer, women cricketer? I think all of them. All of them are such <laughs> humble souls, uh, yeah. such friendly souls, and I somehow. You know, I, I've always studied in a girls' school, girls' college, <laughs> so I, I I get along with uh, you know yeah. I understand I think uh, women that way very well. So it was lovely. Yeah. 
So, who was your uh, childhood favorite cricketer when you were growing up? Did you, did you had any childhood favorite cricketer? Because you must have followed all the sports very closely. Because as you said, you are a sports lover. My entire family was a huge, huge MS Dhoni fan. Mm -hmm. Also, because my roots come from. Oh, so my. yeah, I think MSD is one person we all like were involved. My mother was crazy behind MSD. Mm -hmm. Um, I think another cricketer that. Sort of made an impact during my childhood was Ricky Ponting. Ricky Ponting. So uh, Ricky Ponting, yeah, yeah, Ricky Ponting was was one captain that all of us used to be in awe. Yeah. So what do you say about uh, MS Dhoni in one word? Because you being a big fan of MS Dhoni, one word because he has retired from international cricket. What do you say about MS Dhoni in one word? One word for MS Dhoni. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. We are talking about MS Dhoni. What would you say about uh, uh, if if I give you a minute to talk about MS Dhoni? Because you said you are a, you like debating and you like to talk on the stages. So what do you say about MS Dhoni? Let's say you have two minutes to talk about MS Dhoni. We want to hear from you. All right. I like this jamming. So Mahendra Singh Dhoni, MSD <laughs> as he's popularly known. I would call this man a phenomenon. I don't think he's just a cricketer. I think he's a national sentiment. That is mm -hmm. what this man is. Um, the only captain, the only Indian captain to win all ICC uh, <laughs> trophies. Yeah. He has etched his name in the history books. But other than that, we share a special bond with him. Is because also, you know, we recently I tweeted about the fact that when my father used to uh, was asked where you come from, and he had to completely explain the city that he comes from and talk about. You know, I come from the city which has a lot of waterfalls, happens to be the <laughs> capital of Japan. A lot of people could not locate Ranchi on the map. I think MSD is one perfect person who's put Ranchi on the global map. And yes. it's uh, it'll be unfair to even say just Ranchi. I think uh, what he's done with Chennai Super Kings and what he's done for the entire country is something that nobody will be able, if, very, will be able to forget. Yes. Um, and not only for what a wonderful cricketer that he is, but also for a what wonderful human being that he is, what a great yeah. leader that he is. There are some people who just know how to win hearts and I think MSD was just born to do that. Uh, I've not really got an opportunity to have an interview with uh, MS Dhoni ever, but I think if there was one wish, I would, uh, I think I would, I would ask two wishes. One is, uh, uh, you know, getting MSD introduced to my mother. Um, <laughs> Uh, she's going to go crazy. Uh, I must admit, I'm not as big a fan as my mother is. So, <laughs> she is on the next level. So, I think that would be one wish. The second wish would be to probably do a good talk show with MSD. That's so nice. The spontaneity, the words you're using, it's so nice. So, when uh, with the context, I would like to ask, what would you say for the people who are really... Uh, aspiring to become a presenter or a sports journalist, what would you say uh, for them about uh, uh, to get more command on the language? Read a lot mm -hmm. and every time you read loudly. Okay. <laughs> That's the only way. If you know how to listen to yourself and if you yeah. think you sound good when you listen to your own self, I think you are the best critique of your own self. So, always read. When I, even when you're reading the newspaper, just read it loudly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, how was that experience uh, uh, when you were hosting the shows or interviewing the film stars? How was that experience? I, you know, when it comes to film stars, I've actually hosted uh, very few. I've uh, hosted Shah Rukh Khan, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Arjun Rampal, Irfan Khan, and uh, and and Farhan Akhtar. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. So, how was that? You, I think you've uh, uh, worked with CCL too, Celebrity Cricket League uh, also, I guess, if I'm not wrong. No, no. You might have hosted uh, the basketball events, but where there were uh, celebrity uh, film stars. Yeah, that is coming there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what's your, uh, I mean, how fascinated you are about Bollywood? Do you watch the movies, Bollywood movies and all the movies? Or, uh, I'm, a, I'm a total Dekhi at heart. I watch all Bollywood movies. So, who is your favorite film star, Bollywood star? I I don't have any favorites in when it comes to Bollywood. I I uh, I you know because I got an opportunity to do an interview with Shah Rukh Khan. I think Shah Rukh Khan will it will be. <laughs> uh, 
I will. Uh, I, I, you know, I when my director had asked me that day that are you going to be nervous? I said no, sir. I'm not going to be nervous because I am not a very big Shah Rukh fan. And he was like, "Chalo, good. That works for you." Yeah. But uh, when he, when I finished the shoot, I went to him and I said, "The next time you make me do an interview with him, I will be nervous because now I am a Shah Rukh fan." Yeah, because so, you, have, you have known him. Yeah. And once I sort of personally met him, because everything that people say about him is that he portrays on camera, which is charming and and uh, you know, like respects women and all of that is very true in yeah. real life. Yeah, yeah. So who who was the cricketer uh, you posted uh, was so easy for you to post or was so easy for you to interview? Who 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 would you say it was so easy? Easy. Like easy in the sense, uh, I mean, it, you you didn't feel nervous or you didn't feel uh, anything. You just, I mean, how, how, yeah. I think both of them. Uh, I think yes, if you know your, if you do your research well, yeah. I don't think you should post anyway. Yeah. So it was fine. Yeah. yeah. So finally, to end it up with, what would you say for the aspiring presenters or a sports journalists? uh to become more successful follow the sport become mm-hmm. a nerd learn about the sport read about articles read follow stalk your players that you you know you're going to go and interview on the social media to see what they are up to um i think reading and doing your research uh is the key because content is king in sport yeah yeah it was nice talking to you ridima thank you very much for giving your time you i think because you've been so busy from morning hosting the shows and given us the time it was pleasure hosting you thank you very much it was it was a pleasure too thank you all the best thank you